if you are uh, straightening the teeth very very fast what are the damages it can cause lot many damages there are going to be sometimes severe pain teeth might become non vital there might be external root resorption sometimes there might be internal root resorption teeth becomes loose at the end of the treatment where you have mm-hmm. to you know splinted it for a longer period of time sometimes we have seen cases where they you no know, try to pull the teeth so fast on a night of wires so that the roots come out of bone called bone. as dehiscence yes lot many things we see sometimes we cannot always blame the uh, doctors also some of the patients also want unreasonable results in the faster most time so that's the reason i tell my patients hit them when they are young so bring them when they are 12 years 13 years i am surprised to see even now uh, people come at 20s or 18 and all they say pehle kyun nahi le aaya isko bolta bhi hum 13 years ke time mein 14 years ke time mein leke gaye bolta abhi time nahi hua and all hmm. but with the advent of newer uh, technologies if the invisalign and even 2 by 4 appliance expansion screws you can intercept an orthodontic case as early as 7 years and it's a common protocol in abroad in uh, developed countries like us and australia uk where you need to see an orthodontist or even if you don't see an orthodontist your general dentist refers to the kid to orthodontist at age as early as 7 years okay so we are not over treating the children by orthodontics no we are under treating okay actually speaking we are under treating <laughs> <laughs> okay. we don't an orthodontist never gets to see the kid until the 13 or 14 by the time good amount of damage already has been done in the sense there might be some over retained deciduous teeth mm-hmm. some uh, uh, deciduous teeth have fallen quite early and so there's some unerupted tooth some lingually or buccally erupted tooth has already come which would have been prevented if they come early by doing some amount of space maintenance by some amount of serial extractions right all these kind of things even if i put braces or even if i put the aligners i have to use retainers right yes there are two school of thoughts one says that you use the retainers for some time and the other school says that you you have to use the retainers for lifetime Life what is your opinion on uh, this i belong to the second school of thought <laughs> <laughs> retainers has to be used for lifelong why because teeth that are in the forward position or mm-hmm. crooked position are actually comfortable in the oral capsule you know about the oral capsule or yeah. the oral cavity which is like well balanced between your lips muscles tongue orbicularis oris and all this muscle ligaments the gingival attachments everything they are very comfortable but you are not comfortable with them aesthetically you are not comfortable with them aesthetically so you are changing their shape you are changing their position okay so they tend to come back to the original position acha so you have to stop it by holding it for a sufficient period of long time okay if i have a 13 year old kid or 12 year old kid and by the time of 14 15 i st- i finish the treatment but then mm. sometimes what happens because of the late mandibular growth or because of the continued aberrations of their uh, tongue activity or because of their continuation of some habits like tongue thrusting or mm-hmm. thumb sucking that or because of the accelerated growth then there might be some relapse again because of the growth and adult regions you are again is going again is the you know that buccal capsule therapy uh, buccal capsule formula and there might be some tongue thrusting and gaps might open hmm. so there are multiple theories so i am sometimes you know perturbed by the <coughs> fact that people say how can you wear it for lifetime i say see you have so many things that are you are wearing lifetime if you have power Pitticles. you wear specs for the lifetime right. if you have any fracture you get your uh, bones fixed and a rod is permanently on the lifetime and you have a feeling it's there to be lifetime you have an implant it's for lifetime so similarly if you want your teeth to be straight mm-hmm. wear a retainer for lifetime do you think orthodontics can play a role in treatment of tmj disorders yes absolutely deep bite cases especially mm-hmm. are lead to lot of tmj disorders once your deep bite is treated your tmj things going to be improved drastically uh, abnormal contacts trauma mm-hmm. from occlusion all these are uh, corrected by orthodontics and apart from that open bite and uh, all mal occlusions in vertical dimension and sometimes even in anterior posterior direction like excessive overjet also will causes tmj issues and sometimes alignus by self because they themselves disocclude the uh, upper and lower jaws and also have that you know night guard effect so alignus also are going to be drastically helping the tmj disorders okay sir do you trust the ai generated treatment plans absolutely not as of now because everybody is scared i read a lot of books and people say ai is like potential threat to lot many professions and lot mm. many jobs might be laid off because of ai but dentistry is something where still you have to be human to human connect is there and right. you need to treat them so use it to the potential where it is necessary suppose not for the diagnosis but suppose for better uh, differential diagnosis or whatever and all okay. and uh, utilize the technology for your advantage to give better experience 
better result and more prospective result to the patient. How much of the revenue is coming from your orthodontics, from your clinic? Uh, I never really <laughs> calculated that way, mm -hmm. but uh, I can say 20-30%. Okay. And where are you investing these monies? Money? Huh? I reinvest into some amount of open a new branch. I keep uh, uh, buying new stuff to the uh, existing branches. Like all my branches have OPGs and my main branch has CBCT. All I have, I am the first person in the city to you know, uh, start using scanners. I have scanners right back in 2019 only. So we use a lot of digital dentistry. I keep upgrading and my staff also. I keep on ways to think how can I still improve my presence, everything. I travel a lot. I have traveled 41 different countries till now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, I take a lot of time off to reading books also. And I trying to find out uh, what more can be done to my patients to make them uh, happy and come back to me again and again. Okay. Which country did you like the most? My personal favorite is uh, Cambodia, Angkor Wat Temple. Uh -huh. You might have heard about it. One of the most famous temple complex. It's like stretched about 50 kilometers, 50 square kilometers. And the main actual temple is almost about 5 kilometers. You, you can wow. see huge uh, Hindu mythological structures okay. way back in from uh, four to five centuries back. And that too, in such a far uh, place from India. So, mm. in, I mean, Hinduism was spread almost till that much region. Mm. But now hardly we see... Hindu temples only in India. Okay. Sir, do you think that general dentist can also do ortho practice? We orthodontists, as you know, we have this, <laughs> <laughs> this but uh, not complex to its, of, you know, this thing. Okay, not Gen to its highest potential, but some of the no. procedures can be done. General dentists can do orthodontics. You know, at least I feel rather than doing orthodontics, they should be well versed on identifying the right time right process and right procedures that can be done by the orthodontist. Okay. To your surprise, you have been asking about orthodontics to me since last so many, so much of time. But I myself stopped ortho doing orthodontics three years back. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, two full-time orthodontics working for me. Okay. And uh, I do only implants now. Okay. So now if you ask me general dentist can do implants, naturally I'll say yes. Because in doing implants, I'm a general dentist. Huh. Isn't it? So because none of the, I mean, in orthodontic curriculum, not even uh, basics of implantology are ta taught. Mm -hmm. So I, gone are the days, you know, when 20 years back, when I passed out, uh, there used to be a lot of, you know, deficit of orthodontics that orthodontists are considered to be very arrogant during their consultations because they were like very selected few. They used to go to so many clinics mm -hmm. and general dentists like hardly have any say in thing. But now I feel, not only orthodontists, even surgeons, endodontists are abundantly available in market. So I feel rather than burning your hands in some things which you know little work, you delegate that work. I can suggest dentists, not only orthodontics, don't try to do everything. Pick one niche, composites, implants, or uh, good root canals, or uh, smile designing, or veneers, mm -hmm. or something like that. And delegate rest all to specialists. It's okay. only then you can give the best to your patients. Choose mm -hmm. one niche, become top end in that niche until and unless you are orthodontist because it's like nothing of the basics are also even taught in the general dentist curriculum. Right. Huh. So forget orthodontics, pick any one niche, go to the top end of that niche. Take care. What is the one tip that you can give to the dentist who is in the college right now? There will be a lot of negative talk around you that there's going to be huge saturation. There is a no future of dentistry and all. Don't listen to all of that. There is saturation in every business. There is saturation in everything. You know, jobless lawyers, jobless engineers, and jobless <laughs> MBBS doctors also everywhere. So do not lose hope by listening to that kind of negative talk. Uh -huh. There is a lot of scope in dentistry and you have to keep upgrading your knowledge. You have to have you know, that laser sharp focus on your field and profession, definitely you are going to excel. Do not uh, waste time on unnecessarily on trying to do uh, something not related to dentistry. The moment you finish up the college, join in any clinic nearby, pursue your master's, choose your master's based on your passion, not on what is like most working then. And even if it is a non-clinical also, keep uh, upgrading your clinical skills. Okay. Because at the end of the day, even today, the general public doesn't know that there are so many specialties in dentistry. Forget general public, even the doctors doesn't know that there are so many branches and so which branch does what. Mm. So branch is not specific. So do your MDS and then start your practice as soon as possible and keep upgrading your knowledge. For the normal people who consider dental treatments to be highly costly, how do we convince them for aligners when they have braces as an option? 
so that's what no uh, you can't sell something which they cannot afford no no he is coming in mercedes let's ha then then you need to have real talent to sell those aligners show them the braces and show them the aligners okay you can tell them okay if you want braces i'll put the braces for i'll give you a couple of placebo aligner in the sense mm. like try an aligner use it for 2 3 days and then i'll put for braces also for some time some mm. few braces in the thing then you see and then you can tell most people don't do this they try to force sell it it's actually speaking people who come in mercedes and all no they always feel like they have been uh, people are being trying to you know dupe them and dupe the money off mm. but then it's easy to uh, sell them rather than to sell to a person who is like not having money mm. you tell the advantages and disadvantages of each and everything in a very this clear and concise manner say in the talenters don't uh, i have this you no know, fixed protocol of taking me and my team have this no wires no monthly visits no poking uh, no uh, jetting wires in the middle of the night and you can eat anything you can mm. clean your teeth well hygiene is very important uh, you can teeth your clean well there are no demineralization uh, below the bracket regions right. and you have a party you have a no pitch to the age group what they are suppose if there are some 40s females when you say you can go to your kitty parties without uh, alenas mm. the aesthetic purpose was there but then lingual braces are also an option then how do we lingual braces had i can say i have done lingual braces 20 30 cases way back in 2012 to 2015 i have been to italy with uh, to have a course with rafi romano i have been to human singh uh, in taiwan which are supposed to be the legends of lingual orthodontics okay. to learn from them and i did many cases in my clinic also but then now i don't do lingual why why is it because aligners have come acha link the main idea of doing lingual was people doesn't want to show their braces hmm. but when aligners have come and with per product like invisalign where you can do even the most complex cases like impacted canines uh, distalizations expansions also with invisalign why do i want to you know eat with twisted hand like this when i can directly eat with the you no know, straight hand so right. when you have such a good product Uh-huh. you might be an excellent driver uh, with a four wheel drive mm-hmm. uh, which can uh, go on in any terrain but then all you have given is a straight road so why do you want that heavy vehicle with all four wheel drive one you can a simple car also will go mm-hmm. similarly you have a better product at your hand which can give better uh, just because see that's what i want people to not to do you are a very good uh, lingual orthodontist huh you can do excellent <laughs> results but pay, why do you want to give the pain of that lingual suffering to the patient just because you know the thing okay so suffering is more in lingual uh, obviously, basis obviously obviously better than that go for aligners yeah. okay if there is one person who have just given neat mds and he wants to choose one branch should he opt for orthodontics and if yes why again depends upon their passion some people i have seen a lot many doctors first choice is endodontics yeah uh, previously i used to have this orthodontic bias Mm. when i was actively practicing orthodontics but now i don't have i i don't do uh, braces also and i would like them to choose uh, surgery or prostho because i could not do them <laughs> and surgery i love it i would not particularly say orthodontics is the best any mds branch clinical non clinical is the best provided you have the necessary focus to excel uh, do whatever is the best what made you interested to go for implants cuz it's like very unique for me that orthodontics and an implantologist as well conventional implants you will be surprised to know that first 9 years of my practice not a single implant has been placed in my practice okay. because i used to be under the feeling that i am orthodontist why should, do i learn a implants or why should somebody ask me implants and you know sometimes patients teach you a lot many things a patient Uh, walked me into my clinic and said i want implants i said i don't do implants i have my friend doing it uh, i'll refer you to him i said no sir i want uh, in your clinic only uh, i want under your supervision only that has really intrigued me i said i called my friend and i got the implants placed and then i saw there is so much of uh, fast money in implants and mm. uh, then i understood okay we should come out of your speciality bias ji you should come out of your speciality bias to learn the see the picture uh, you know on a broader scale it's only okay. then you can give a holistic uh, comprehensive treatment plan to the patient if you are stuck under that uh, speciality bias you mm-hmm. will try to treat everything from your orthodontic point of view <laughs> or from your prosthodontic point of view only right then you cannot give 100% treatment plan to the patient okay from this conversation what i have got is you have kept learning 
you have never stopped learning yes, right yes yes as the time went you learned something that was uh, necessary for the market sir uh, what i wanted today out of this conversation was the vast thing about the orthodontics if the people should choose the orthodontics now or if they shouldn't what was the branch related to or what was the treatments but i know that you have so much of the clinics and to open that as you are a great dentist you have to be a great businessman also yes in upcoming days there we will discuss about the business strategies how you have expanded how should one expand but for this podcast related to orthodontics i think we have covered everything thank you so much for your time sir thank you brother and thanks for we will calling do me one more we will do one more podcast which sure, will sure, convert sure. the business strategies i love to okay. love to thank you sir thank you Thank you.